The World Health Organization, WHO, has expressed concern over the impact of COVID-19 on women and girls in Africa. WHO's Regional Office for Africa in Brazzaville, Congo, stated this in a statement posted on its website. Humanitarian crises, including health emergencies, affect men and women differently. As COVID-19 continues to spread in Africa, there are concerns about its impact on women and girls with vulnerabilities feared to worsen as the pandemic overwhelms health systems. Although overall in the African region, women account for around 40% of COVID-19 cases. This ranges from 35% in some countries to over 55% in South Africa. The agency also said the burden of caring for the sick was also largely borne by women, noting that most health workers in Africa are women. We are now joined by medical practitioner Ben Uluwajebutu. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. How Let's start with the figures that we are having. More cases, even as um, you know, the rains are here. What do you expect from the health authority? The fears of increased infection higher than what we had last night. Yes, I, I, I think the weather, the weather, the cold, the cold region will will, will increase infectivity and um, and trans so it's important we have, we have um, health, health authorities come out and give modalities for people and increase the physical physical distancing um, approach because people are people are people are now moving in in crowds. I see I see bus stops. I see I see bus stations with so many crowd and because of the weather, it it will be easier for the the, the 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 virus to to transmit and to transfer to other people. So it's important we, we increase the physical distancing aspect of this um, of COVID-19, you know, because it affect it's, it's going to make make the the virus more infective at this period. That's why the, the the cases are increasing and the numbers are increasing on a daily basis on the rise. Aside from the caution and the guidelines that have been issued, do you think maybe um, a restriction? The restrictions should be reinstated, considering this heightened fear about the weather. I think it it will be the, it will be the best approach to go to because if we don't restrict restrict again, <coughs> this these numbers would increase in the coming days. I can bet you because the rains are here, the floods are here, people are beginning to Thank go out the more. So if we can restrict the orders and make sure that the timetables are followed properly about the market spaces. You know, I'm glad. I'm glad about um, them rescinding the the, the the church and the congregation congregation ideas. Also, restricting the the um, the air flight, air, domestication of uh, domestic air flight. That's 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 a good development because by the time you're, you're in the plane and this love is, is air conditioned, that air conditioned, that cold environment will increase the infectivity. So it's important we'll, we, we we sit down and look at it again that. We might need to go back to restriction order, like what happened in South Korea. You know, our cases are not, the curve is not flattening. So we need to, we need to look at it critically. Are we, are we looking at the economic value or the, or the health value of the people? And the death will be increasing every day. You can see many people are getting sick. And as I've said in, the, in your report about the maternal health, most women now that, that, that are getting pregnant, we, we are not even sure if COVID-19 is not, is not, is not transmitted, is now, um, is now trans transmitted from mother to child. You know, that's, that's another research that's going on now because most women that are, that are even having, uh, that, are, that, that are getting pregnant now are, are, are getting infected. So I think it's important that the restriction should come up again so that we can begin to control, you know, try to flatten the curve and increase awareness on physical distance. I think that's the issue very, very important. We are not we are not obeying here. You know, you still see the buses, people 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 on the in the buses going and they're carrying three, four passengers just to make more money because they don't understand why this why they why they should carry two people. So we have to go back to restriction and follow follow the orders properly. So okay, Co considering the concern that has been expressed by the WHO uh, as it affects women during this pandemic, is it beyond um, the infection, the possibility of infection? Because we know from statistics that men seem to be more susceptible uh, to getting infected than women. 
So if we take away that, what other aspects uh, do you think uh, the concern is coming from when the WHO says they are very concerned about the welfare of women and girls um, in Africa during this pandemic? Okay, so, 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 so you, you know that rape, rape has increased because of the pandemic. People are, the lockdown has increased rape, has increased sexual, sexual violence and everything. So I'm sure WHO has realized that there's a pandemic within a pandemic. Rape is not a pandemic within a pandemic. You know, I saw, I saw on Twitter, somebody says, we have five rapes, five rapes in, in every five minutes in Africa now, which means that is, that is actually more focused on women and girl child. You, might, you can imagine. So if you have a rape pandemic in a COVID pandemic, that's a problem. So I'm sure WHO have been seeing that they've been seeing the, um, the, the the ravage, the rampage of of the, of the rape cases, and that has affected maternal health in Africa. So it's um, the lockdown has caused a lot of things, but uh, and, and also the, and also COVID. So they they, they they begin to see what effect does COVID have on maternal health. So I, I think rape is one major effect that has happened, and it affects a lot of a lot of women. And girl child. T talking about the, um, you know, the concerns and the protests that the increasing number of uh, domestic violence and rape and, you know, assault has uh, generated, um, there's been some response from the government. We know that the National Assembly has come up with an action plan to get people to, uh, members to commit to um, ending rape. And then we also have, on the other hand, the AGF coming up to say that they are going to provide special centers or I'm not sure if it's the AGF now or the IGP coming up to say they're going to have special centers mm -hmm. to take care of matters that affect um, uh, women, specifically rape. Uh, do you think, beyond the rhetoric, that the actions are commiserate to addressing the issues of rape in this country? I don't, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Why, 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 why are we waiting for this, for this time? You know? It's, it's, you know, we have to lose Tina. We have to lose yeah. Ua. To be able to see that this thing is a pandemic in this in this part of the world in Africa. Okay, I think we lost him, uh, but he did uh, speak very well. We thank him for his insight.